let's look at something slightly more complicated okay the multiplier so what i'll do is i'll just change the project setting and convert it so that the multiplier becomes the top module right and synthesize so the multiplier output once again if you look through it right the latency once again it you know shows all zeros interesting right so what happened over here it basically says that this has also become a combinational logic circuit but now look at the time period right it shows 8.4 nanoseconds right basically saying that if you want to multiply two 32 bit values together you cannot do it within 10 uh, or rather you can do it within 10 nanoseconds but it will take you up to around 8.47 nanoseconds or so as the critical path this uncertainty by the way please ignore it i've never found a useful use case for that thing it's sort of just a safety margin but you know even if that uncertainty is violated it's not like it's going to do anything to the final output of the tool okay now let's go down and look at the utilization now we see that three dsp slices are being used over here why three why are three dsp slices being used so an int is 32 bits whereas remember what i said a dsp uh, slice uh, can well actually it's a dsp 48 so what it can do is it can multiply to 24 cross 24 numbers so if one dsp 48 slice can multiply to 24 cross 24 numbers but what you are trying to do is just to multiply to 32 cross 32 numbers right you can't do it with one dsp slice okay what you can do on the other hand is you know do the sort of uh, partial product multiplication that we do when we are trying to multiply to two digit numbers right so we'll uh, basically take like the uh, multiply the ones place together then multiply ones of one into tens of the other tens of the other first into ones of the second and then the tens place numbers together right so that's effectively what is happening we have three of those products right 24 cross 24 8 cross 24 24 cross 8 all three are being done using dsp slices and the final 8 cross 8 multiplication can be done in a simpler manner using some lookup tables okay so with all of that in place it is able to do this and what you find is that once again you know the rest of it is exactly the same the ap start ap done etc is the same let's go look at what the hardware looks like it is basically just, just as a signed multiplication okay once again Vivado hls is just being lazy here it allows uh, with the verilog compiler to take care of the actual multiplication implementation okay now Notice one thing, in the Verilog code that's generated, it does not say anything about a DSP48 slice. It just uses a star. But in the report that it gave, it says that, you know, all these DSP48 slices are going to be used. Okay. So what it displays over here versus what is there in the Verilog code can be slightly different. Because even though it is showing three DSP slices here, whether three DSP slices are used or whether some other way is used in order to implement this, actually depends on the Verilog compiler, how that is going to take that signed multiplication and implement it in hardware. Okay. This is just an estimate. So that's why it says utilization estimates. This is an estimate from Vivado HLS, but it cannot guarantee that the code that it generates will get synthesized in this particular way. Okay. Now let's try one small thing, right? Change the solution settings synthesis and i'm going to just change the clock period from 5 to let's say 3 nanoseconds right see if i can target something like 300 megahertz okay just run the entire synthesis what do you think is likely to happen right just think about this of course it's done right so now you'll notice that i did meet my timing constraint i was able to get to a 2.1 nanosecond delay but now look at this, the latency has suddenly become six clock cycles. What's happening? Right, it has been heavily pipelined, right? Why am I saying heavily pipelined? Because, I mean, I brought it down from 8.4 to 2.1, right? So it basically looks like four stages of pipelining. Why is it showing a six cycle uh, latency over here? Uh, I am not entirely sure. That depends on how the architecture actually gets implemented, right? But the one thing that you can notice is it still has the DSP slices being used, but it also has a whole lot of flip-flops suddenly being used over here, right? 247 flip-flops, right? 
where are those being used let's go look at the synthesis uh, the code itself right and you will notice that now there are two files over here one is the mult.v the top level and now suddenly look at this by the way uh, so let's go back to the solution now you see that there are two additional signals not just the start done etc there is also clock and reset right remember we never introduced a clock or a reset in the c code it was automatically brought in by vivado hls okay and what has it done it basically now if you go look at the very log code you will realize that what has ended up happening is it has generated a state machine a finite state machine that is what this fsm stands for okay so what you will find is that now when we look at this code you will actually realize that the code that it generates is quite ugly it's difficult to read okay it's very difficult to understand what is going on because there are no comments right i mean so something like this for example i can say that yes it's a state machine but i really don't know what each state corresponds to okay and this is a relatively simple state machine where it is just sort of you know counting and moving forward one state to another actual state machines that vivado hls generates can you know really become very hard to understand quite easily okay so what do we do i mean so why am i even showing you this code the point is even though it is difficult to understand there is still a lot of when you know advantages to sort of just looking at the code and trying to understand what's going on over here right one thing we can see is now this has generated a state machine these numbers over here if you look at what is there on this right hand side what are the state encoding that it's using it's basically given the numbers 1 2 4 8 16 right so effectively what it's telling you in other words is it is trying to do something called a one hot encoding of the states what does one hot encoding mean it means uses one flip flop per state rather than log n flip flops to indicate the present state of the system right why do you do that because fpgas have tons of flip flops you can use them very cheaply you don't really need to optimize any anything over there right what does the state machine do it has some uh, you know the, the interesting thing is it also has an actual multiplier right so this is another piece of hardware that is directly instantiated over here right and over here you will see that you know it actually says okay use a seven stage multiplier with 32 cross 32 input and a 32 bit output okay so by the way you realize that you know because my uh, function was declared as having a return also of output type int even though i am multiplying to 32 bit numbers the output is not 64 bits the output is 32 bits okay which 32 bits it will decide that based on how the thing is actually implemented internally okay then there is this initialization of the state machine the reset state and so on right why exactly does it create the state machine well i can tell you why that is so that you know the pipelining after i give the input it basically needs to remain for the next so many clock cycles before it is ready for the next input okay and in fact if you look closely you will realize that this ready signal becomes high only when the state machine reaches state 7 every other time ready signal is equal to 0 similarly idle also is 0 unless it is in state 1 okay if it is in state 1 and start signal is equal to 0 that is not yet started then idle is equal to 1 it is idle and you know waiting to get another input otherwise it basically says it's busy don't give me new inputs and similarly the done and the ready in this case are you know the same thing okay this other verilog file if you go look inside it you will realize that essentially you know it goes one step further it just basically tries and instantiates this module right and this is something which directly can get synthesized by xilinx it's one of the primitives that is present over there so we almost never do you know use these kind of things directly but vivado hls can generate this kind of code for you efficiently okay so bottom line without any change to the c code by just changing the constraint i changed the synthesis quite dramatically right i brought in a clock i got a multiplier that was pipeline to six clock cycle latency that ended up increasing the amount of hardware used quite significantly but the clock period came down to around 2.1 nanoseconds without touching the c code at all 